Hello friends, it's Michael Chayati here, and you're watching Behind the Scenes for the Music for Into the Silence. Walk away, walk away from the comfort that is calling. The album begins with the words, walk away, walk away from the comfort that is calling. Step into the suffering unheard. In a sense, this first song can almost be considered the thesis of the entire album. Um, telling the untold stories of hurt and suffering around us, as well as the healing that can come afterwards. Um, but can we take a moment um, to step out of our comfortable bubble, and at least, only for a moment, step out of the familiar and identify with the hurts and suffering of those around us? And are we willing to step into the silence? And that's the message that this song, as well as the rest of the album, invites us into. And I will pay the night with a touch of the Blue Horizon is a fun one, uh, perhaps one of the more upbeat songs on the record uh, that contains lots of energy and uh, throughout the writing process I've been experimenting with a lot of different orchestral arrangements so in preparation I had to do a lot of active listening to a lot of classical and orchestral based music and really just pay attention to the details. Um, what is the role of each instrument? Um, the str what are the strings doing? What is the brass section doing? Um, and learned a lot there and then in crafting my own arrangements um, having together to put those together in a mix that fits well with even a lot of modern instruments such as the drums, bass guitar. Um, so that's just definitely been a lot of fun working with. Um, the message conveyed in this song is a positive one and uses art as an imagery. Um, my favorite line in the chorus says, I will paint the night with a touch of dawn, draw the sun into your blue horizon. And actually this, this song came quite uh, early in the process, it came together and it sort of paved the way for um, the rest of this album, musically speaking. Can it be the sun you sent to die and raise me up? Inspiration for Sleepless Lullaby um, came shortly after a medical mission trip that I had the opportunity to, get, to take uh, during my fourth year of medical school. And the wonderful thing about traveling overseas is jet is that uh, it gives you the opportunity to really expand your worldview and realize just how big this world is. And I remember as I, you know, during my time of travels, you know, my vision would start, just start to expand. Um, but then um, what happens is when we get back to the States, as many times, you know, I felt my worldview just go from this to, you know, back to here, back to baseline, um, back to my world of emails, of daily tasks to do, and just, you can just easily forget all you learned in such a short span of time. And, um, one day, I just, you know, it was a regular day, I received this, um, this note in the mail that just really talked about a lot of the things that are going on in the world, a lot of the natural disasters that were going on, and I remember at that moment, it's almost like it took me back to that place when I was traveling before, and I really did not know what to do with that feeling. Um, here I was, reading about all the terrible things happening in the world, and I'm in my room, it's quiet, I'm safe within these four walls, and not everyone has that reality, and I didn't know what to do with that. And honestly, this song is pretty much just to capture that feeling. And hopefully for those who hear it, um, we can just remember that life is just much more than us and what we can see with our very own eyes. Say you love me so that I am here. If only for a moment. So as I was writing for this album, I really also wanted to include a song that told an account of what it's like for a child to stay in the hospital. Um, it's why I work day by day, um, it's what I encounter, um, and I know there's such a vast array of different experiences. So it turned out to be quite a difficult task, and I went through several revisions of the song, and just one after another just wasn't working. So finally, um, the final version actually turns out you know, a little more upbeat um, and positive than I originally thought, and I actually kind of like it, um, as it provides that kind of balance between that hope um, that needs to be there. and. Um, you know, sometimes the reality of some of the children we see in the hospital is that they may stay a long time and come back again and again and again, and sometimes it does feel like a second home away from home. And the beauty of this song is that um, musically and lyrically, you know, this song may paint a different interpretation for everyone, and you know, each person that listens to it can um, take the meaning that he or she sees fit. Your eyes, I see a heart that's 
September Sky is probably one of my favorite songs on the record. Um, the spark of this song came actually during my hematology oncology rotation uh, during my intern year uh, in residency training. Um, for the first time ever, I was given the blessing and opportunity to care for children um, with cancer. And honestly, it was very hard to put into words just the emotion um, felt by not only the child but by the families as well. And um, so the song simply starts off by just acknowledging the struggle and saying that, you know, it's okay to cry, it's okay to be scared. And the first chorus says, uh, you don't have to be afraid to fear. And then the song eventually builds up to the bridge section um, where it has this beautiful image painted of just a million banners of gold stretched out across the night sky and the message of hope that it could symbolize. And the month of September was chosen in particular because one, it's Cancer Awareness Month, and there's a special meaning involved with the color gold, um, which is the national color for cancer. But my intent of this song is hopefully to be able to broaden and reach out and touch the lives of children who maybe not going through only cancer, but other things as well. Um, and finally, as the song progresses, it turns around and says, you don't have to be afraid to fear. Um, the time for courage is now. And you've got a smile that you've been hiding and go and let it out because the whole world needs to see it. So as one of the more upbeat songs on the record, A Beautiful Winter takes on a different approach to the journey of healing. Uh, traditionally, a lot of times we may think about healing as something that's purely simple, black and white, something that we do and move on, and sometimes it is that way. Um, but there are many times when the process is not so simple and that actually the healing process can be quite messy and may last for years, may even last an entire lifetime. Uh, so I, I really wanted to explore that depth um, and the lyrics of A Beautiful Winter attempts to you know, reconcile these two halves of one having moved on from a particular trying time or hardship um, and the newfound joy that's, that can be experienced um, as well as the sorrow and baggage that may still be present um, for a period of time and knowing that's okay and that's just part of the process and part of the journey that we all go through. To the hurting in the world We hear you now, we see so Musically, Hymn for Humanity is the most stripped down track on the record. It um, has the fewest number of instruments and I wanted to at least include um, one intimate song um, with a simple arrangement. And up to this point, pretty much uh, almost all the songs had this big grand orchestral arrangements and with melodies and harmonies and I'm sure that'll be wonderful to play with a real life orchestra one day. Um, up to this point, I have not had that opportunity, but who knows, maybe someday that will be reality. Um, anyway, this, uh, this song conveys a simple message, which in essence is a prayer that people have come together, unified and stand in solidarity um, with those who are hurting in this world. And I just would like to imagine, you know, people coming together and, you know, as the chorus says, you know, to the hurting in the world, we hear you now, we see you now, and it ends with this invite for everyone to sing together this hymn for humanity. There's this amazing quote by Mother Teresa who said, I see Jesus in every human being. I say to myself, this is hungry Jesus, I must feed him. This is sick Jesus. This one has leprosy or gangrene, I must wash him and tend to him. I serve because I love Jesus. And man, those are those are just one of those quotes that just hit you to the core. And I think I, I may have written this song maybe partly as a challenge to myself. Um, you know, and the patients I encounter day to day, and the individuals I come into contact on a daily basis, you know, do I view them as fellow image bearers of the living God? And you know, fully worthy of love, each every, every one of them. And I know that's so much easier to say on paper but so hard to put into practice. And I think as flawed human beings, our natural inclination may be the opposite. And you know, I have to put myself in that category many times, especially if I dig deep and search my motives. Um, so in a sense, the song serves as a reminder for that truth um, of who we are, all of us, in God's eyes. And the phrase Imago Dei, uh, translated literally means image of God. Music in the air. 
uh, Our Harmony is actually one of the few songs in the album that takes a short detour from the theme that's um, illustrated in the other songs in the album. So along the same timeline that Blue Horizon was written quite early on, Our Harmony came together and um, that's before the album took on a particular direction. Um, but I still really like the musicality and poetry of it, so I knew I still wanted people to hear it, and that's why I found its way in there. And um, it's basically a song that just wants to paint that natural desire for companionship, for love, and the hope that one day, when the, when the singer and his future lover would meet, that they will learn to love each other, will learn to, in a sense, harmonize with each other as they live their lives together. And um, that's the, so that's, there's a lot of poetic imagery uh, written here. And musically, it's actually quite fun to play because the song actually changes, key, uh, changes keys four times, um, but it's done so in a very subtle manner. And actually, a lot of the other songs in the record also has its own key changes, but um, I try to write them in such a manner that fits with the message of the song, and fits appropriately. So, um, and that can be very powerful when done at the right time. Wonderfully and so fearfully made Portrait of heaven, the picture so Mother in Love actually came about um, during a songwriting session which, um, at least at the start, it seemed like a very frustrating day. Um, I remember dedicating this one entire day to songwriting, blocked off the entire day. I worked on this one song for probably hours and did different arrangement, different lyrics, and nothing was really working. Um, and it got to the point where I decided, okay, I just need to take a break. Um, that song eventually did not make it on the record. I never really completed all of it. Um, when it came back to um, songwriting again, I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to write for the sake of writing and um, not worry about whether or not it's going to become you know, on the album or not. So, you know, I thought about different topics I could write about. I was meditating on my time in pediatrics, and one of the things that never ceases to amaze me is just that unfailing, unconditional love of many mothers I've had a blessing to be um, able to meet, um, and, fathers t and fathers too. Um, but there's something extra special about mothers that I quite don't have my finger on. And um, so I kind of wrote this as a sort of an outsider's view, in a sense, imagining um, what that love of a mother would feel like, um, especially from that first moment. And what happened was, in the span of over only a few hours, um, I can't remember, but most of the lyrics and the melody was done. And I guess at that time, I just felt uninhibited and wrote whatever came to mind. And what came out was something special. And looking back, um, there's this moment when I thought, you know, I, I really wanted to share this song with others and wanted people to hear it. So this is um, another song that doesn't exactly fit with the theme of the most of the other songs in the record, and it's one of those that's unashamedly totally happy all the way through. Um, and I realized that maybe a romanticized, idealistic view of motherhood that doesn't take into account all the sleep deprivation and what happens at 3 a.m. in the morning when the baby um, is crying and wants to feed. But, you know, I still wanted to ca capture at least that magical moment in song when this new baby comes into this world and that magical bond between a mother and her child begins to form. So in the first two albums I recorded, uh, Faith and Fear and Parallel Journeys, uh, they both ended on slow melancholic songs, which for some reason I always thought that it's a nice way to end an album, um, maybe because it leaves the listener pensive, I don't know. But this time I just want to try something a little different. So I want to end with a bang. And so this song, in contrary, starts off with this um, high energy drum loop that just sets the pace and sets the vibe for the rest of the song. And um, the cool thing about this song musically is it actually incorporates some earlier melodies from earlier songs, especially the ones earlier on the record. So until finally in the end, the melody that you hear is exactly the same as the first song. So in a sense, there's this like, cohesiveness and coherence that ties in the beginning and the end together. Um, kind of almost like a musical, which is pretty cool. And um, in the end it finally states by inviting everyone to join together. And now that we have stepped into the silence, now that we have heard the stories, we can no longer be silent. And we must now let our voice, our song, be heard. Finally, thank you so much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed this little sneak peek into the story behind the songs of Into the Silence. And always thank you so much for your support. I can't thank you enough. And if you haven't already, please be sure to check out the website, michaelmdmusic.com. There you can find new updates um, when they're available. And I guess I'll talk to you soon. All right, see ya.